Father, before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for everything. Thank you for life, health, and thank you for strength. We thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence and give you glory and honor. Now, God, since you're here, since your word declares, we're two and three are gathered together in your name. You're in the midst. So since you're here, God, we ask to move by your presence, move by your power, and move by your anointing. Father, we set aside our, of our soul, our agenda tonight, and we say, God, you can have your way in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you now to move. shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint and the word of the Lord is forever settled in heaven Clap your hands all over the room. Let's glorify the God of our salvation. Y'all scare me. You clap me your hands like I asked you to clap for me. Clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, he is the son of the living God. Living, he loved me. Come on, I need you to raise the volume of your worship in this room. I need your praise and your worship to be intentional tonight. I 
hey, glory to God. Worship him out of the city of your soul. Come on, Zion. I know you ain't going to show, but I need you to open up your mouth and sit you the first. Come on. The power ain't in the pew. Pulpit is in the pew. Come on, lift your voice, church. Give God the high praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Psalms 47 and 1 says, clap your hands, all ye people. I'm waiting for all ye people, all ye people, clap, 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 clap. It doesn't stop there. The next part says, and shout unto God. Let me be more specific. It says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I need you to shout like you know victory is somewhere in your vicinity. Come on, put it like this. If I hold my peace. Let the Lord fight my battle. Some of y'all came to get warmed up, but some of us walked in here with enough testimony to give God praise. We don't need a click track. We don't need a specific key. All I need is a moment and a memory. Somebody put it like this. When I think of the click, you got 10 seconds to respond. Na, 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 na. The glory is already in the room. Let me give you the math. You ready? Little praise, little blessing. Big pride. I'm going to give you the next 15 seconds to prophesy the size of your next blessing. I want you to make your praise equivalent to his goodness. You got 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Come on, church. Come on, Zion. Ow! Shut up. Because some of y'all came here for a good song. But there's some of us that came in this room because we came in with a reason to praise God. Hey, I praise him all by myself. I don't gotta sing your song. I ain't gotta hit your key. As long as I get an opportunity to say, to God be the glory. So many ways you make. So many doors you open. So many times you... He did better than good. Somebody give him a better than good praise. Better, 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 better. Oh. I gotta go, but he has kept me from all evil. Just another day oh, the Lord He has me Stop your head and shout Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Y'all ain't come back out Y'all came to see a building Somebody came in this room To give them front Do me a favor and give your name a disclaimer. Tell the neighbor, I walked in this room with a right and a reason to praise him. Somebody take advantage of your... Woo! Woo! All right. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's Sunday night. Can we have some Sunday night church? I say, can we have Sunday night church? Or should I say Sunday night devotion? I want you to clap your hands like the devil in between us. Clap your hands. Break out them 
tambourines. We came to have Sunday night church. That's a good tambourine section over there. Everybody know that God is great, greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to His name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God is. Come on, sir. Glory.
nothing new. Tell them, I didn't come to look at you. I didn't come to look at you. I came to clap my hands. I came to clap my hand. Anybody come to clap your hand? I came to clap my hand. I came to clap my hand. I came to clap my hand. I come to move my seat. Anybody come to move your seat? Anybody come to move your seat? I come to move my seat. I come to lift him up. 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 Y'all praise it. Me, 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 me. Don't stop getting, 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 getting. 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 Don't stop getting, getting, getting.
introduce you to the fire starters. They gonna praise God no matter what. And if you can't beat them, right here you don't have to say it just because it's popular because the real praises are identified not just when everything is going right what is your response when hell is all around you because right is what I do y'all I love him without a mic in my hand even on a hard week like this he is worthy Yahweh is worthy he is worthy to be praised I will praise. I may not trust to praise him. I will praise him. I made up my mind to praise him. One reason, one name. Help me, Holy Ghost, because contrary to popular belief, there is still bondage-breaking power in the precious name. Somebody lift your hands in the sanctuary if you know who I'm talking about without religious rhetoric, but reverence in your heart. My Jesus! Jesus I 
worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor he's worthy. Oh, are y'all looking at me? Tell your neighbor he's worthy. Tell him he's a healer. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a prayer answerer. And say, neighbor, when I think of the goodness, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Anybody happen to be saved tonight? Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. I got Jesus on my mind. And I'm running. I'm running.
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's a good God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not sure about y'all, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I just got extra. I got extra excited when they said, let's go on over to Spirit and Truth Atlanta. Amen. We're grateful to be here today. My name is Associate Pastor Lewis Pollard, and this is Trustee Teresa Thomas. And ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost just walked in the room.
minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Just real quick, look at somebody, you're on assignment, whoever you're sitting next to today, look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, you can look around and tell, we're not quite done yet. Tell them, here's what that means to me. If I shout and tear something up, they got to come fix it tomorrow anyhow. So tell them, we might as well get what we need tonight. The carpet got to be clean in the house. Go ahead. We got to redo the walls in the house. Go ahead. Take 30 seconds. Let this, let's break in the sanctified church. Clap your hands. Come on, it's Sunday night service. Let's make it sound like it. Corey, help me now. Please help me, sir. Clap your hands. Yeah. Oh, you know I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Oh, how many things? It's gonna be alright. What did it say? Oh, you know the Holy Ghost and everything. Be alright, be alright. Let's act like a Sunday night revival. Hey, say, be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright. section at somebody Woo. Oh, Lord. I need to see a few more claps in that balcony that riser section yeah yeah you know I got a feeling that everything is gonna be on oh I Say that I, everything, it's going to be all right, be all right, be all right, yeah, somebody clap your hands like it's already all right, I said clap your hands like it's already all right, ooh, no, 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 no. Before you sit down, just touch three people and say, already, all right. What's that mean? It means this, that problem that I had, just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, just got deeply involved. You know what I did? I turned it over to Jesus. No, 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 no. I stopped worrying about it. Somebody give God praise like you turned it over to the Lord. And he worked it out. I said he worked it out. That's the testimony. I said he worked it out. Didn't God work it out? Yeah. God bless you. Have your seat for real. Yeah. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. There's a rumor going up and down Springdale that the name of the Lord is still a strong tower. And the righteous run it and they say, somebody tell me tonight, what's his name tonight? If you love him like I do, would you give him one more loud praise in this place? Everybody, can we give him one more praise? Bless your praise team. This is the day that the Lord has made and 
Uh, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. And we're just excited uh, to be here for the first Sunday night service uh, here at the temple. Anybody glad to be in this place? I want to make sure I'm not by myself. Amen. We are grateful to be in this house. And we certainly I want to extend protocol to all. There's so many uh, phenomenal gifts in the house and in the room. But uh, I believe the charity begins at home with spirit and truth. Would you help me thank God for all of our amazing in-house gifts, all of our elders and leaders here at our church. We We've got some good ones. I need to hear our church say something to me. We've got some good ones, y'all. We've got some good ones. Pastor Vance Robinson and Pastor Pollard and Elder Matisse, Elder LaShawn, Elder Dana, Elder Antoine. Come on, can we sell Elder Joya, Elder Lawrence? Amen. All of them and all of our ministers, we salute you and thank God for you. And then, uh, y'all know it's it's only March, but it, it's it's got a little Christmas on it for me uh, for several reasons. One of which, y'all, gotta go crazy for this. My mama's in the house tonight, y'all. Dr. Shirley Ann Moore is here. Can we celebrate her? Can we celebrate her? We're going to have to hear her voice before the night is over. Uh, and then she didn't come alone. My little sister's in the house. Sister Sharon Elise Moore with us uh, tonight. And we thank God for her and for uh, everybody. I mean everybody uh, that is somebody. Everybody that is somebody. And we're just grateful for what God has done tonight and what he's doing. But I'm so con tremendously overwhelmed. And I'm going to go down and uh, list some special people. But we did it today and uh, couldn't do it the way I wanted to do it. And, and let me just going to get the elephant out of the room. Uh, we're, we're still uh, uh, shouting and rejoicing and I'm excited that uh, uh, we're here this far and y'all know how construction projects are. Uh, things come up at the last moment and crews get delayed and things happen and so no, we don't have no paint on the wall but there is oil on those walls. I'm going to tell you that now. Hey, man, there, there, there is some blessed oil rubbed in because we didn't pray it in here and uh, so we're going to sand it and paint it and get all that together and get these last cords and things together uh, for next Sunday. You don't want to miss it. In fact, you don't have to wait till next Sunday. Be here good Friday. Pastor Johnny Brown going to be here. It's going to be church in here Friday. Uh, but we're excited about the progress. But I wanted to do this uh, this morning. We are a people of honor. Somebody just say honor. We're people of honor. And uh, everything that God has allowed us to do uh, has been done in large part because of our commitment uh, to walking and operating in honor. And uh, we mentioned it this morning, but I can't go further tonight uh, without making mention of it again. And Deacon Aaron, I want, to, I want you to help me celebrate uh, I mentioned, of course, that we were able to purchase this church from an amazing power couple, a real power couple. Some, some of y'all call yourselves power couples and don't neither one of y'all got no power. That ain't, that ain't what that is. But we had a real power couple blessed us uh, in the person of Pastor Jasper and Pastor Alicia Williams. And I want y'all to help me honor her. Pastor Alicia Williams is in the house and spirit and truth honors you, Pastor Alicia. We honor you. No, no, y'all got to do better than that. Come on. Honor is a key. I'm trying to help you. It's a key. Help me honor this woman. One more time. Make some more noise for her. Make some more noise. We love Pastor Alicia. Uh, her and her amazing husband, Pastor Jasper, who will be with us next Sunday. Uh, they're going to be coming around and we're going to be seeing them. Uh, they are a part of our family and they're going to be worshiping with us uh, in this season. And we are honored to have them. But I did this as well this morning and uh, I was wrong about his service. He came to the 6 o'clock. I thought he was coming to 12. But how many of you all watched our faith journey on Facebook? How many of y'all saw our faith journey on Facebook? Yes, yeah, so y'all saw the Temple Kids. You remember the Temple Kids? Well, if you weren't here this morning, isn't it something? The Temple Kids have all joined the church. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to shout. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. They didn't join by themselves. Mama joined. Sister joined. Brother joined. Y'all ain't... We get in the whole family. Y'all ought to say something to me in here today. And we honored the Temple kids. We've been outside working and all that. And they would just show up and we end up playing football and all of that. But we welcomed them and honored them rather because they were the first part of the welcome committee uh, to bring us into the Springdale uh, community here at our Atlanta campus. But they were not by themselves. They had a little dog named Zeus with them. Some of y'all saw Zeus, Zeus is a part of the, the outdoor security team. Uh, I, I'm not a dog person. I just want to establish that before they show you anything. I'm not a dog. I don't like dogs. I wasn't raised with dogs in the house. Dogs are for outside, and uh, we praise God for that. But uh, this, this, this dog, when, when, when the temple kids came, uh, I said, hey, you know, y'all got a dog? Y'all can't bring the dog in the church? And they looked at me and said, that ain't no dog. That's Zeus. I said, well, Zeus looked like a dog, so you and the spirit get on out of here. 
But you know, Zeus didn't mess around and got a little Holy Ghost on him because he comes and he patrols the church and uh, he walks. I'm in here sometimes. I've, I've been in here uh, sometimes late, 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 late. And I'm in here just me and Jesus, just me and Jesus crying out to the Lord. Lord, help us get through this. And I hear a bark outside. Go look outside. Zeus just waiting at the little step. And uh, I'm saying, dang, my dog. I don't even like dogs. And I go back in and work. And then along, he bark again. I go, look, see what he's doing. He just sitting there waiting. And that dog will sit there and wait all night till I come out. Then he'll just walk me to the truck and watch me drive on off. And so I said, you know what? We need to find out who Zeus belongs to. And so we did the research, and Mr. Kent is Zeus's owner. And they told me, I heard a rumor that Mr. Kent is in the house tonight. Mr. Kent, where are you? Mr. Kent, that's Mr. Kent right there. Oh, man, I'm talking about you, Mr. Kent. I'm talking. Bring me this. We, we want to honor you, Mr. Kent. We, we went out uh, to Things Remembered, and they couldn't get it in time, so we got creative. We got Zeus, a spirit and truth dog, but put Zeus up on. There you go. There you go. Mr. Kent, this is sweet. Come on, Mr. Kent. Y'all help me welcome Mr. Kent. He's our next-door neighbor. <laughs> Mr. Kent, I want to celebrate you, man. Now, let me talk about Mr. Kent. Let me talk about him. Uh, Mr. Kent was so kind. Uh, not only not only does Mr. Kent live across the street from us, but he is so kind that he'll come over and make sure the lot is in order. I've heard report Mr. Kent will come over. Somebody lets him try. He'll go over and get the trash out of our lot because he believes in being a good neighbor. And so if you're going to be a good neighbor, Mr. Kent, we sure going to be a good neighbor. So thank you for welcoming us to the neighborhood. And thanks for letting your dog come over and play. I appreciate you, sir. Y'all clap for our neighbor, Mr. Kent, y'all. Y'all clap for Mr. Kent. Say, oh, Zeus, we said hi. Now, he can't come out on Sundays. We, Miss Kent say he's going to lock him up on Sundays. I can't have him running through the lot. Then they got that door open. Zeus be done ran in here and sat on the altar. We can't have none of that. Uh, but we wanted to honor. We wanted to honor them. And, and tonight's a different kind of night. Don't worry. Don't get nervous. But I have to not only mention uh, 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 Pastor Alicia and, uh, 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 and Mr. Kent, but there are so many friends and ministry gifts that are here in the house. Uh, some of them are guests. Some of them are just straight family, uh, like, like, like Pastor Jonathan Nelson. That's, that's not no guest. That's, that's family. He, he almost halfway kind of sort of part-time go here on Sunday nights on first and thirds of the eighth month of the year. Amen. He kind of part of our family. Uh, and so we're always honored to have him. But then there are others in the house like Pastor Gerald Haddon on the front row. You know, just very important people. Very important people. Amen. He's so important. He brought a whole lot of Detroit folk up here too. They're very cool. They're very good. They got Gucci vest on and fancy seekers and whatnot. Very important people. Uh, they're part of our family. But I want to do this. I'm so grateful. I see see all the way from uh, uh, the Pacific Northwest. He is uh, technically my cousin. He is my, I believe, my second cousin, but more importantly, uh, he is the diocesan bishop, uh, a diocesan bishop in the Pentecostal the Assemblies of the World, the PAW, uh, over that great council. He is in the house. Would y'all help me celebrate Bishop Thomas Davis? Stand up, Bishop, if you don't mind. Help me celebrate Bishop Thomas Davis being with us from Seattle. We honor the Lord for him, and then uh, we're so, so, so grateful. Uh, we're so, so, so grateful. I've got several that I'm going to highlight specifically, but I want to make mention, let me just do this like this. Every pastor uh, in this church, now I'm not talking about, you know, it's 2020, everybody a pastor. I'm talking about not just an IP address. If you got a physical address, if you got a church that we can go to, I want every pastor in the house, would you just stand on your feet so that we can see you and celebrate you? Look, look what's about to happen. All these pastors, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Pastor William Townsend, Pastor Randy Coggins, Pastor Gilmer, bless you. I see you down there, Bishop. Bless you, bless you. Uh, Pastor Addison Kennedy, love you, sir. Good to see you. Can we clap for these men of God one more time, one more time, one more time? Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for them, but then uh, as we're coming around the mountain, as we're coming around the mountain, I'm so grateful. How many of y'all know that fellowship matters? Yeah, how many of you know affiliation matters? Can I get a witness? Uh, I'm so grateful that uh, in this uh, very, very, very short journey, uh, I say as Paul said, I count that myself to have apprehended. We are at the very beginning. We are at the genesis of our ministry, and uh, we're learning everything on the fly. But I've already discovered in this short time that it's good to have uh, uncles and, and people in the city that you can look to for genuine support. 
I'm not talking about folk that'll see you. Oh, Doc, we got to get together and don't never call your phone. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that will call you just to tell you, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. How you doing? What do you need? Can I help you? And I've asked God to raise up people like that. And uh, one, several of them are here tonight. I need you to help me celebrate. You know, all generals are not old. Uh, sometimes we think that a general has to be ancient and almost out of here. I don't think that's the case. A general just needs an army. And uh, we have some generals in the house that have been kind to our church, uh, have been beyond kind to our church and to your pastor. One of them is in the house right now. Help me celebrate all the way from New Life, Bishop Jerron, Apostle Jerron Williams. Can we celebrate him? Oh, we can do better. Come on. We're not doing this all night, so let's do it right if we're going to do it. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. He has been kinder to me than he had to. And uh, it's amazing, you know, when certain things started happen, you know, some folk, you know, amen. Some folk act different sometimes for some reason. Bishop Williams has never switched up on us, and we honor him. But he's not alone in that category because there's another father in our city, a general in our city uh, that has been there. God has put him in my life, I believe, and in the life of our church for strategic moments. Uh, I never forget we were at the South Campus using a uh, event hall on Sundays. We were setting up breaking down, setting up breaking down, setting up breaking down, believing for our own place. We've been putting it out there. Actually. We've been putting it out there, putting it out there. And uh, one Sunday, I'm in, uh, they use a place for weddings. And so my little pastor's office, pastor's office, was the uh, the bridal dressing room at the little event center. And so I'm sitting back here with all these wedding dresses on the wall. And uh, they knock on the door and there's said, there's a Pastor McBride is here to see you. I said, Pastor TJ McBride? They said, yes, he's here. I said, he's here, here right now. He's outside right now. And I walked out to see Pastor TJ McBride standing there with a smile on his face, no armor bears, no entourage. He didn't land his helicopter on the roof and descend like a dove. He didn't do nothing. He, he just dropped in out of nowhere. I said, Pastor, what are you doing here? He said, man, I was on my way. Now listen to this. He was on his way to one of his four services. All right. So he was on his way to one. Uh, he got other things on his mind. He said, but I wanted to stop by and just pray with you. What? What? Pastors, legit thousands of people there on the south side, really from all over, uh, but he's based on the south side of the city, a father of the city. And uh, he said, I just wanted to pray with you. And he just literally stood there, didn't even take his overcoat off, stood there, held my hand, and just prayed a prayer of faith over me. And I want to tell you what happened. I want to tell you what happened. I want to tell you what happened. That was Sunday. The next Sunday, Seven days from the time he came and prayed, we were announcing our new South Campus. Y'all, all right, I'm, you better get around some folk that have some faith, I'm trying to tell you. Can I go further? Pastor Alicia, he didn't know when we were in contract and talks about this, but while we were talking, he texted me randomly one day. He hadn't said anything, I hadn't said anything to him, but he texted me randomly and said, hey, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. I know y'all are looking for a building. I want you to know I'm praying for you. The next week after I got that message, we closed on this building. Can y'all help me honor God for Bishop-elect Timothy McBride? Can we celebrate him? Tabernacle of Praise International. Come on, y'all, let's help him. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate. Y'all ain't shouting good enough over here, and I don't like that. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. We honor you, Pastor. We honor you. We thank God for you. And uh, I'm coming, I'm coming around. I'm bringing the train in the station. I'm bringing the train in the station. But, um, you know, I said I feel like a, a kid at Christmas time in part. Uh, yes, because my mama's here. That, that goes a long way. But we have, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, saints and friends, we literally have one of God's finest in the house tonight. Now, we have several of God's finest, but this one that I'm talking about uh, is a gift to the body of Christ at large. He is known beyond the state lines of South Carolina, beyond the eastern time zone. He is known throughout the commonwealth of faith. And uh, God really joined us together at such a critical time. I had no idea uh, what God was up to, but I do know that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And uh, sometimes... The question is asked, well, how exactly do you know God loves you? There's so much calamity in the world. There's so much trouble. How do you know God loves you? And one of the answers that comes back is you know God loves you in part by simply examining the gifts that he gives you. And this is, in fact, a metric that we can stand on. We know, spirit and truth, that God must love us because he has given us the gift of Bishop Michael A. Blue. 
Would y'all help me celebrate? That's my pastor. Would y'all help me se Oh, y'all gonna shout better than that. That's that's my that that's that's our bishop right there, y'all. Y'all got to do better than that. Come on, spirit and truth. Can we welcome him for the first time as our bishop? Can we do that? I need to hear some more. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. We honor the Lord for Bishop and for Pastor Melinda Blue that's with him tonight. We honor the Lord for our first lady. And uh, I'm going to call an audible. I'm going to call an audible. I'm going to call an audible uh, because we cannot have him here. Now, he is not at all here to preach. He has been working all day. He was just with Bishop Jakes uh, in uh, uh, Texas, I believe, for the International Leadership Conference and uh, uh, flew out this morning, had to fight through delays to get home to their assignment, uh, preached, and then ran, as I'm told, essentially ran from the pulpit to the car and drove from South Carolina just to be here with us. That's love, y'all. Oh, come on here. That's love. And we cannot have him in this room and not just hear his voice. Would you stand all over the sanctuary? He's coming to greet us. He can just say praise the Lord. He can say whatever he want to say. Do whatever he want to do. But help me honor the gift that is our bishop, Bishop Michael A. Blue. Can we give God praise as the bishop comes? Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Don't you agree with that? Hallelujah. Just look around to you, above you, beneath you, beside you. This is the Lord's doing, and it is indeed marvelous in our eyes. Let's praise him as though it's marvelous. Let's, let's thank him because it's marvelous. And I was thinking, uh, please be seated, everyone. Uh, I was thinking that uh, another adjective for this, when we consider how God continues to unfold vision through this visionary, I think we might want to comment that this work is a remarkable work. I think you might have missed the pun. I said it is remarkable. I think you missed it again. Help the person next to you. I know it's late on Sunday, but tell them this is a remarkable. Amen. And uh, don't you thank God for the life and spirit and passion and vision and strategic anointing on the life of Pastor Mark Moore Jr. Come on. It is remarkable. Hallelujah. Bible historians tell us that of the four Gospels, the Gospel of Mark was the earliest one and that all the others are really somewhat, particularly the synoptics, are actually improvisations and elaborations upon the Mark gospel. That's not coincidental because what it means is that Mark becomes a template. Mark becomes a prototype. Mark becomes a pattern. And I believe that as it is in the synoptic gospels, as it is in the canon of scripture, I believe this is what we are seeing, that God is making this young man a prototype. He's making him a pattern, making him a pace setter. And I'm grateful to God. And I remember where uh, Paul gives a comment on the, the gospel writer. He tells Timothy, make sure when you come to see me, bring Mark because he's profitable. He's profitable. Sir, God has made you profitable to the body, profitable to this congregation, profitable to men and women across the world. Amen. Spirit and truth, I want to say I commend you. I celebrate with you. It is our joy and our high privilege and honor to just celebrate and to witness what God is doing. We're here just to say to God be the glory. 
to all of God's great men and all of God's great women who've been acknowledged by name and by station. We certainly thank God for you. And my final comment uh, in, in, in these words of greeting is that as I reflect upon this, this, this building, I'm reminded of the fact that Jesus told his disciples and told Peter on one instance, he says, I want you to uh, launch out into the deep and let down the nets for a drought, a drought. And you know the scripture, the Bible says that Peter said, I'm tired, but at your word, I'll let down the net. Whereas Jesus said nets plural, he said nets singular. And the Bible says that when he encountered them, they were repairing and cleaning the net, repairing and cleaning the net, repairing and cleaning, refurbishing the net, repairing the net. And I see that this is a kingdom of God net, but what God is doing is using this man of God and this company to repair and refine the net because there's a great harvest of souls. Thank you. And we're going to see to it that this net won't break. Tell somebody this net, this net won't break. This, this net won't break. This boat won't sink. But every soul that God has ordained to be a part of this work shall come in to the fold and the harvest of the Lord. If you agree with that, I want you to just praise God for the net. Praise him for the net. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Tell somebody there's overflow on the way. There's overflow, there's overflow. I'm excited about what God is doing. Listen, uh, let's go ahead. It's Sunday night church. You know what to do here. It's offering time in the building. It's offering time. It's offering time. Hallelujah to God. I want us to honor the Lord uh, with our substance. We're moving. We got to get this great gospel choir up here uh, to bless us. It ain't, it ain't real Sunday night church without no choir. And uh, we have one that can get it done. And so I want us to honor the Lord very quickly with our substance even now uh, as we get ready to sow into what God is doing now. Uh, I don't have to take a long time. I shouldn't have to take a long time uh, to tell you and to uh, convince you that this is in fact good ground. Uh, any any project now I want to make our boast in the Lord uh, really three weeks ago now we needed six hundred thousand dollars to do phase one and phase two all right six hundred thousand dollars to do phase one and to do phase two and uh, we went to work Pastor McBride Bishop working our faith and uh, we were honestly in great faith for the three hundred fifty thousand for phase one that's we were, we were believing for that. And uh, I want to just report. I'm not going to hype you up. I'm not going to try to shout you here. But I, I wonder if you can get happy with us, though, because while we needed 600000 to do phase one and two, to fund phase one and two, I wonder if you all to get happy over the fact that we are less than $100,000 away from being done with both of them. About, about, 80, about $88,000 away from being done with one and two. Y'all not happy over here. And wait, I didn't add this part. We're doing it all debt free too. Did I say that? Okay, I need everybody that claims it for your house, for your family, for your student loans, for your mortgage, for your car. Look up and down your road, just say debt free, debt free, debt free. Come on, if you claim it for your church, for your children, for your, come on, tell somebody, debt free, debt. Listen, if it's in the atmosphere, you might as well pull it down. Some of y'all don't want it. One more time. If your neighbor don't get it, speak over yourself and say, debt free, debt free. I've got too much ministry to do to be bound by debt. I, I got people I got to feed. I, I got scholarships to give away. I can't be bound by student loans. I, yeah, debt free. So, hold on, John. So I say that only to tell you that this is good ground. This is good ground. This is ground that God is breathing on. Many of you in this room, your names are literally on this pulpit underneath uh, uh, this wood and underneath all of this stuff. On this back wall, behind this LED, in the prayer room, which they're finishing up, in the finance room, many of you, your names are literally a, a part of this foundation as you all have sown into what God is doing. But I want us on this first Sunday to set a benchmark uh, to 
set a major, major, major benchmark. And I want to do this. I want to do this. I know we've got the giving information up, uh, but I want to do this because part of the reason that we were able to erase all of that debt uh, or all of that gold is because we had a supernatural Sunday last week. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean a supernatural Sunday last week. Uh, those of you that were with us in church, uh, you know that we work loud. We put out there what we're believing for. We show people what we're doing. Uh, I don't believe in raising money from folk and then they don't see what happened with it. And uh, so we're telling the story, walking by faith, believing God. And uh, last week, God used Pastor Keon Henderson. God used uh, Pastor Travis Green. God used Pastor Mike Todd uh, to bless us. Y'all ready to shout? With $124,000 last week, y'all. Y'all, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe that's regular for you. That don't happen all the time where I come from. We praise God for that. Uh, yeah, 124000 just from those three pastors. Uh, Pastor Travis Green sent $10,000 from Forward City Church. Uh, Pastor Keon Henderson, he reached out first. We were $14,277 from hitting that three fifty dollars goal. And he said, I'll send the whole $14,000. i will take care of it. He did that. We're shouting about that on Sunday. Listen to this. This is not scripted. This is not made up, Jonathan. While we're in church shouting about the $24,000, Phones start going off in the sanctuary. Folks start scurrying and running only to discover. Now, catch this, please. While we're shouting in Atlanta, in the Eastern Standard Time Zone, Pastor Mike Todd is preaching in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And in the middle of his message, he shares that their church is sending our church $100,000. I don't know if y'all got the principle. While we were shouting for what we had, come here. God had us on somebody else's mind. I wonder, do I have anybody at the Sunday night service that can take 10 seconds and just praise God for what you already got? Like he's about to put you on the mind of somebody. Didn't he say, I'll cause men to give unto you? Press down, shaking together. Running over. us while we were shouting over what we had God said I'm gonna make sure you have more than that because I just believe God won't let us praise us for something and leave us where we are and so we, we were blessed with that and uh, we preach here we teach here the importance of sowing and giving and I said to our team I said you know what God has raised up people to give to us I don't want our church to be a warehouse I want our church to be a distribution center and so I said well you know what we, we not at we not at the hundred thousand out of level yeah, the praise the Lord hallelujah not yet we're on our way I said but what if we took a tenth of what they blessed us with and bless some other churches and so what we decided to do what we decided to do was be excellent on our level and so we, we prayed and sought the Lord and there's so many ministries and I want to be clear this is something that we want to incorporate as a part of our DNA because generosity is a part of our core values you hear me that generosity is a privilege and uh, we, we, we looked at who was doing some things and who had some projects going on and I didn't know we were going to do this uh, tonight we were going to do it this morning uh, but things happen you know how things happen uh, I didn't know he was going to be in the room tonight I didn't know he was going to be in the room tonight but uh Bishop Jerron Williams just built a new church not too long ago over in Decatur. And we know that they're making some upgrades. So we're giving Bishop Jerron Williams a check tonight for $3,000. For New Life Cathedral International Family Church. Y'all better go crazy like we sending it to your cash app. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight, Bishop. But well, we got to check for you before you leave tonight because we want to help support the work at the new building over there in Decatur because we appreciate the kindness that you've shown to us. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I said, I want to bless a church. Now don't start that because generosity does open something up now. I said, I want to I bless a church in our city. 
I said, but then I want to bless a church that we're in fellowship with. And so we were looking, 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 looking and discovered uh, that, that one of the amazing uh, uh, pastors uh, that we have relationship with uh, uh, is going through uh, another building project there. They're getting ready to buy some land. And uh, we were talking today. He said, Pastor, I need, I need some cameras for our church. He wasn't asking or hinting. It was literally just the flow of conversation. And I said, how much your cameras cost? What you trying to get? He said, man, we need, need like three, four thousand dollars for cameras. I said, that's what you need. I said, okay, so here's what I need y'all to do. I need somebody to go on Facebook and tag Pastor Abraham Bellinger and tell him that we're sending First Fruits Community Church $4,000 to get some new cameras. Y'all ought to say something. Don't be a hater. Don't, don't be a hater. Uh -uh. God don't like that. Come on. Rejoice with him that rejoice. Tag Pastor Bellinger. Tell him that we're sending $4,000 to get some cameras. I said, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. I like this. Giving feels good. I like this. Sewing feels good. And I said, I want to bless a church in Atlanta. That's the home God has planted us in. I want to bless a church that we're connected with and in fellowship with. Uh, I said, but then uh, anybody that knows me knows that I have a heart uh, for the city of Detroit. My mother's from Detroit. Born and raised in Detroit. My grandfather pastored there in Detroit uh, for 50 plus years. I, I almost feel as if I, I halfway grew up in Detroit, uh, if you count them summers up. Uh, but uh, I said, I want to bless a church in Detroit. I want to bless a church in Detroit. And I started thinking about it. I said, wait a minute. My grandfather pastored in Detroit for 50 plus years. And the church is still very much alive and well and under the leadership of a phenomenal man, my brother, Bishop uh, J.O. Rasul. And uh, I did some investigating and discovered uh, that they're also trying to do some upgrades. They need lights. I uh, want to do new lights in the sanctuary uh, for their production and for their stream. And so I was looking around and I said, you know what? If I'm going to bless anybody, charity begins at home. I'm going to sow in the New Liberty. So somebody tag Bishop J.O. Rasul and tell them $5,000 is coming to New Liberty so that they can get the lights that they were talking about. Somebody tag him and tell him that he'll be there this week. Can we give God praise in this house? I don't know. I don't know. Now, let me, let me just speak prophetically. We're going to raise this offering and go home. Let me speak prophetically. If we're going to give like that and open up a door, I need you to understand that if you're in this house and in this atmosphere, when the door come open, anything good is liable to fall out. I need every sower in this house to just give God some glory because the windows of heaven are open. If you are tired at your church, the windows of heaven are open. If you go to this church, the windows of heaven are open. If you connect it to this church, the windows of heaven are open. to give tonight with the confidence that when you give to us, to this ministry, to this house, we're committed to making sure that it does not stay here but our seed continues to go around the world and multiply. And so here's what I want to do. I'm sowing tonight. I'm sowing in a big way. It's the first Sunday night service here, the first day we've been in this church and uh, I want to do something different tonight. I'm starting with a seed of $1,000 into this uh, offering because I'm believing God for some big, 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 big things. I'm believing God. <laughs> I'm believing God. Amen. Firstly, I, I could start with 20 thousand she would stand just as fast now, I can't play with her because she got more money than I do amen uh, but she she already done stood up with me there might be others of you uh, that want to step out in faith on that level because you recognize that the water's trouble I want to go ahead and knock this thing out I want to knock this thing out. Lord have mercy y'all my pastor's standing already sold into the project but standing Bishop McBride is standing bless you sir already sold into the project but standing bless you uh, there might be come on here thank you come on y'all got to clap better than that now Bless you, woman of God. That's one of ours. If there's anybody else, bless you. Bishop Davis standing with the seat of a thousand dollars. Bless you, sir. You might be watching online. You might be. Bless you, Sister Saxon. Is that you? Oh, bless you, Sister Saxon. I don't hear enough of y'all clapping, and I don't know how I feel about that. Bless you. Let's let's go ahead and just set a benchmark tonight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's a good number. Seven's a good number. If there's anybody else, I want you to move now while the water's troubled and the feast of the Lord is going on. The table is spread, brethren. The feast of the Lord is going on. All right. Here's what I need. I need everybody even online. Now, I received from, from, from someone that you know very well. Uh, in fact, I can share this. Bishop James Nelson Jr. came to our Marietta campus a few weeks ago. 
and came through like a rushing mighty wind. Prophesied, just wrecked our church. I mean, wrecked our church. I mean, wrecked. Our, I was out of town, mad I wasn't there. I said, wait a minute now. All right, hold on. I should have been there for this one. I needed that. And uh, one of the things that he said, so much prophecy was released that night, but he said, and, and Pastor Bishop Bright, this ties into some things you shared with me about faith. He called me the other day and said, I wasn't going to bother you, but the Lord won't let it, let, let it go. He won't, won't get it out of my spirit. I said, okay, what's going on? He said, the Lord told me to tell you to start, thank you, Jesus. He said, to start broadcasting what you need to pay everything off. I said, everything? He said, everything. He said, God, thank you, Lord. He said, God can raise up somebody to write that seven-figure check to pay off. Somebody just prophesied, which will just say everything. Some of y'all are only believing God for a piece of your vision. Just, just stretch your face. Just say everything. So I want to stand, and I might not be by myself. Can we just praise God for the person that's going to sell the $1.8 million I need? to do all I want to do right through this season. So no faith, no faith. It's too quiet. Wait, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. A little bit of faith. All right, thank you. Yeah, God can do it. We are one seven-figure check away from a whole different conversation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're watching now, I don't know if you can cash at 1.8 million, but try it and see what happens. See if it go through. Amen. But we believe in God for great things. I need everybody in this room. I'm not here to auction you tonight. I'm not here to auction you. I need everybody in this room that believes God. Hear this, that the same grace on this ministry can rest in your life. I need everybody that can, everybody that can to get a seed of $150 and stand to your feet. Everybody that can. Everybody, everybody that can. Every business owner ought to be standing. Every pastor ought to be standing. Every entrepreneur ought to be standing. Everybody that's believing that your book is going to get published this year ought to be standing. Is that Pastor Tim? Oh man, I, I like you. I love her. I didn't know she was coming. You said she had homework. Pastor Tim, I'm glad to see you. I love you. Amen. Everybody that's believing God for something supernatural, we're standing in evidence that God still works wonders. Come on, there are a few more of you that can get that seat of $150. Even online, they have the giving options on the screen. I want you to move at the speed of obedience. Don't overthink it. Don't talk yourself out of it. I need a few more helpers over there. Amen. We're going to have the side field speakers installed uh, next Sunday so y'all can make sure y'all hear me real good over there. Y'all too. I got you. Y'all leaning in a little bit. I got you next Sunday. Don't worry. Amen. Bless you, Deacon George Stanton. That's a head deacon here at this church. I need a few more of you that can get that seed. Bless you. I'm doing 500. You said, bless you. Somebody clap for that. Somebody clap for that. Bless you, sir. Thank you, Bishop. Who else do I have that's standing with that gift? I want you to do it now. Now, very quickly, somebody say, everybody. I want everybody. I don't pass. I don't have the 150. I want you to get the best you can. Get as close to $40 as possible. And I want everybody with two good legs to stand with me just for a moment. I want to speak this over you. We're going to give. While I'm talking even now, our great gospel choir is making their way to this choir stand. Thank you, Corey, for the delay. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, get the best gift you can in your hand. I'm believing God's going to multiply it. I'm believing that as you sow it in faith, God's going to breathe on it. I'm believing that as you give this offering tonight, God's going to do what only God can. Get at least the $40 a seat or as close as you can I want you to do this for me we believe in confession in our church uh, raise your gift phone iPhone and or whatever you brought with you wallet credit card debit card if you're giving electronically you can come see sister Teresa over here uh, trustee Thomas but raise that seed hear this as high as you see your income going raise it raise it raise it raise that seed as high as you see your credit score going come on and I want you to speak over it say the seed I sown tonight will unlock increase in my future. The seed I sown tonight will unlock increase in my family. The seed I sown tonight will unlock increase in my finance. Real loud, say I'm wealthy. I'm prosperous. I'll never be broke again. If you're not a jealous type of person, tell somebody you're wealthy. You're prosperous. You'll never be broke again. Let's all say it, we're wealthy. We're prosperous. We'll never be broke again. In Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. I want you to give God praise. Our ushers are passing the receptacles. You don't have to sit down because it's about to be churchy in here. We're going to give him some praise forever. If you're giving electronically, you can come see our trustees here to my left. You're right. But as you pass your offering, if you're giving electronically, it's right here on the screen. But let's give God great praise, great praise, great praise, great praise. Hey.
sing that together. Sing that will keep you in. and sing back. Come on. Way. Say 
say it again, yeah. yeah, yeah. One more time, say, God will. Say it, church. One more time, God will. Way out of nowhere. your hands and say he yeah. I know he is he's the keeper my 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 hey, hey, hey. my soul hey, hey, hey. one more time everybody say he Keeper, the keeper, the keeper. My soul. Clap your hands real fast like it's Sunday night revival. Just another day. Thank the Lord. I heard the I heard my sister say it, but I wonder it feel a little wild seeing here tonight. First, just just one time, first lady. One time. Just another day that the Lord has helped me. Just another day.
need all the kept folk to open up your mouth and give God, come on, move past the cute stuff. Give God a praise for his keeping power. Some of us need money and checks to shout, but can you shout because he's a keeper? Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Clap your hands and give God one more praise, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Sound like Sunday night church in here. Yeah. Ah, yes. Psalm 37. Yeah. We got to leave that alone. Because some of us have been kept through things that should have killed you. Can you tell the whole truth and shame the devil? God kept you in some stuff that killed other folk. But touch your name and say, surprise! Look who survived! Surprise! I'm still alive! He can When I see the blood, I got to pass. He kept. The promise is unto you and your children. He kept. He kept. All right, I'm sorry. I don't have a long time. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Grab your Bible, Psalm 37. Ooh. Oh, Lord. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. I, I got to, come on, I really got to preach this. Psalm 37. I know you're ready when you're standing. Just, just tell somebody real quick. And if this ain't your praise partner, don't sit next to them next Sunday. But just tell somebody, say, neighbor. All of you won't get this, but say, neighbor. The reason why I praise him is because I didn't die in it. I didn't die in it. I didn't. Could have, but I didn't die in it. I, in that mess, I didn't die in it. I didn't. In that low state, I didn't die in it. Hey, hey, he's a keeper. Psalm 37. Don't play nothing else, Josh, Jaden. If it's real, they don't need you right here. It's real. Hold on, Jaden. Hold on. If it's real, they don't need, they don't need no keys right here if it's real. Hey. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Let, let, let me hear the sound of, of the redeemed. The redeemed have a sound. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let me. Come on, Zion. Come on. I know this is a young church, but there's, a, there's an ancient anointing that wants to spring forth in here. Come on. We're not called to be everybody else. Open your mouth. Come on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Miracle signs and wonders. Right now. I got to get off of this spirit and truth. You know where we are. Just prophesy to three people and just say miracles by midweek. Tell them. I ain't said it in a minute, but I heard it tonight. Tell somebody miracles by midweek. I'm praising God for good news by Wednesday. Hey, I'm expecting a turnaround before close of business. All right. Psalm 37 miracles by midweek. Psalm 37, look at verse number 23. You know what it says. Well, the Lord says that the steps past the tabby of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. 
Father, Savior, Healer, God. Once again, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. For this day you've allowed us to see, we thank you. For the gift of the Holy Ghost, we thank you. And yes, for the fact that last night was not our last night, we say thank you. We ask now that you do what only you can. He'll save and deliver. Bring high places down and make crooked places straight. Throw your weight around in the room. And Satan, because we know you're listening in the how, we remind you that you're still defeated. You have no you have no space here. We do not glorify you. You're defeated and under our feet. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Every glad heart, open your mouth and say amen. If you believe it, say amen one more time. Return to your seated place for just a moment. I want to preach for just a few moments. Simply from the thought, when God orders your steps, tell somebody, my steps have been ordered. Come on, tell somebody, risers, my steps have been ordered. My steps have been ordered. Brothers and, give me just a few moments, brothers and sisters, saints and friends. <laughs> The Holy Ghost is here, y'all. I said, the Holy Ghost is here, y'all. Don't play with it. I said, the Holy Ghost is here, y'all. Yeah. The lights went down, but the light of the world is here, y'all. Can you open your mouth and give God glory right where you are? Thank you. Come on, give him glory right where you are. Healing is happening now. I'm telling you, it's happening now. When God orders your steps. As you take your seat for just a moment, and allow me a chance, bless your musicians, to share what it is that the Lord has placed on our heart for tonight and this pivotal moment. I think that even the flow of this service has demonstrated the fact that Spirit and Truth is, in fact, a church of multiple generations. One of the things that we were intentional about, even in our design, even in our layout, even in uh, structuring this facility was how we could marry multiple generations in our even physical approach. I said, we're going to have lights and uh, we're going to have a big LED wall and all of that. That's wonderful. There'll be screens when we build the lobby addition off and when you go downstairs and see uh, phase two, the family uh, and fellowship spaces for your children. It'll be state of the art and cutting edge. I said, but I don't just want uh, millennials and Gen Xers and uh, teens and tweens to feel comfortable, but when grandmama come to church, I said, no, 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 leave, leave the old chandeliers because I need grandmama to feel church when she come too. I said, no, we're not going to black out the ceiling and make it modern. In fact, let's restore it back to its original luster because I want, I want to feel like I'm still in church sometime. Because part of the mandate on our house is that we are a church of multiple generations. And one of the things that I love about uh, being a multi-generational church is that in any uh, of our services, you're able or liable to hear sounds of holiness from different eras. Please understand, this is a prophetic house, and at any moment, uh, Elder Antoine or any of our worship leaders can break out in a song of the Lord that you cannot find in a songbook anywhere because God wrote the song in the moment. Oh, yeah. We can chant, and we can jump, and we can flow, and it's a, it's a powerful time, but you can also, and you will, as you've seen tonight here, some choir classics. I'm talking about some Wild Gospel 2000. Y'all, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, you're going to hear some choir classics. You're going to hear uh, some new CCM praise and worship. With, you know, them songs have 9,000 words and deer running through fields and mountains crying and trees blowing in the wind. Oh, that's wonderful. 
but, but, but you're also, please understand, you're also going to hear some old school congregational songs too. I'm talking about songs that you might have never heard before, but if they sing it through two times, you'll know the whole song. Song, song don't have nothing but two or three words in it to begin with. Songs like power. Power, that's the whole song right there. That's, that's the chorus, that's the verse, that's the vamp. We can get to singing power, power, Lord, until the Holy Ghost falls in the room. And, and I like that. Songs, let me see if I got anybody in the room. Songs that say stuff like, Jesus, I'll never forget. What you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me for Jesus, I'll never forget how you. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. <laughs> how can I forget? But you, 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 you've been to the same church I've been to. Songs that, that, that say stuff like, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus that, that washes white as snow. Songs, I'm going to get in trouble here, but songs that say stuff and make declarative statements like he's a wonder in my soul. He's a, he's a wonder in my soul. He's a, he's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. And I was thinking about some of these songs in preparation for tonight and I, I thought about a song that I haven't really heard in a long time but the song, some of you have heard it, it simply says, walk with me Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me Lord. Walk with me. This way it get good. While I'm on this tedious, they, see don't, don't even talk about no tedious journeys no more. I want Jesus to what? Walk with me. And, and this song is something that, that I was meditating and ruminating on uh, this week, even leading to this point and going through the construction project. And, and one of the things that the Lord dropped in my spirit, hear me tonight, is that sometimes while we sing that we want the Lord to walk with us, sometimes we would be better off praying and asking God uh, to let us inform or rather let him inform our steps and let us walk where he leads us because the truth of the matter is sometimes we really don't want to ask God to, to order our steps and lead us down the path he wants us to go down because let's see if I have a witness in here he does not always lead you the way you want to be led yeah, so sometimes, I'll prove it to you, sometimes when he leads you, he leads you down streets that have potholes and, and, and have roadblocks named betrayal. And uh, sometimes he'll lead you down paths that cause you to end up with knives in your back because he's building and developing something. And, and when God leads you, it's often uncomfortable. It's often inconvenient. It's sometimes frustrating. But there are three things, very quickly, we're getting out of here tonight, that the Lord told me to tell you for a when he orders your steps. Number one, get this in your notes and in your spirit. When God orders your steps, number one, please hear me, you won't always know where you're going. Hmm. I, need to I need to know which section to preach to in this building. I'm new here. Uh, I'm going to say it again. When God orders your steps, uh, you will not always know where you're going. I, I know, I know, I know that we are a GPS generation. I know uh, I, I like to use sometimes my GPS for places I know how to get uh, only because I like to see how long the car think it's going to take me. Uh, you, don't worry about it. Just pray for me when I'm on these dangerous streets and highways. I, I sometimes like a challenge. How long do you think it's going to take us to get there? Let's see who right. Uh -huh. we, we like the convenience and the comfort that comes with being told what's coming in X number of feet. We, we like the alert that pops up that tells us that there is a hazard in the road. We, we, we like the assurance of knowing exactly how many miles we have before there's a turn that we have to take but the truth of the matter is sometimes when you're walking with God he does not give you GPS coordinates he does not he does not tell you what to do when to do it how far you have how long you have to stay in this place sometimes he will simply give you a direction tell you to go and see if you trust him enough to obey him 
you don't have to believe me ask Abraham because it was Abraham the father of the faith who in Genesis chapter number 12 and verse number 1 receives a word from God here's what God said to him he says I want you to leave your father's house and this land your kindred and go to here it is a land that I will show you please understand God who is infinite in knowledge could have told him exactly where to go he could have told him what the temperature would be when he arrived he could have told him who was going to be there and what color shirt they were going to have on but instead God intentionally leaves the instructions ambiguous and simply says go where I show you can I talk to somebody in here and tell you that sometimes when you're walking with God you go have to trust him on a mystery Ah, uh, yeah, sometimes when, when you're listening for God and tracing the instructions, sometimes you're going to have to trust him even though the path doesn't make sense to you, even though the route doesn't make sense. I'm preaching to some of y'all in here right now that are in spaces where nothing in your life makes sense right now. You didn't even know you'd be living in Atlanta in 2024. It don't make sense. You, you don't even know why you on that job. You went to school, got all on those loans for a degree you're not even using it don't make sense you you don't like where you work some of you don't like where you live and you've been trying to figure out why I'm here but can I tell you maybe the Lord has planted you there as a piece of your assignment I need I need maybe five of y'all to just tell somebody real quick say neighbor I'm on an assignment I'm I'm on an assignment because it is when I let him order my steps to places that I cannot see that's when I learn how to walk by faith. If I, if I always knew what was coming, I would never have to trust him. If I, if I always knew who was going to stab me in the back and what was going to go left, then I would never have to trust him. But I'm preaching to somebody in here now that has the testimony, this level of faith that you see me walking in now, I didn't get this in a seminar. I didn't get this at a conference. I didn't get this in a workbook. I didn't sign up for a master class. I didn't do an online course. I only got this level of faith from walking in the wilderness. God, where, where, where the wilderness walkers at in here that can say I've lived long enough to know that if I would have just trusted him the sooner he spoke, I would have been in a better place. But now I've lived long enough to know where he leads me. I'm gonna trust him and I'm only gonna put my foot where he tells me do I have any real folk in here that can make up your mind that for the rest of 2024 I'm not leaning to my own understanding I'm not going on Facebook wisdom but come here church if God didn't say it I ain't saying it uh, God help me in here if God's not there I don't want to be there because all I know is that even though I don't know where I'm going he knows where I'm going and can I tell you what he said he said my ways are not your ways my thoughts are not your thoughts and I'm just wondering is there anybody that can give God 10 seconds of praise for no other reason you ready then God knows what he's doing with your life Oh, I know you got your heart broke, but God knows what he's doing. I know it didn't go the way you thought, but God knows what he's doing. Touch somebody and say he knows what he's doing. He, he knows what he's doing. He said uh, to tell you that when he orders your steps, number one, uh, you won't always know where you're going. But then uh, everybody say number two. Uh, he says when God orders your steps please hear me church uh, this is where we are he says uh, you may get there first uh, you, you may get there for when God orders your steps you Sharice uh, might get there first uh, you don't have to take my word look at what Genesis 6 says when we deal with none other but than the name of Noah a man of faith by the name of uh, Noah you, you know Noah don't you you've heard uh, of Noah's uh, uh, 
a, a story in Sunday school and you remember then that in verse 9 of chapter number 6 God speaks to him and the word tells us tonight these are the generations of Noah Noah was a just man perfect in his generation and here's what I like and Noah walked with God I gotta pause yes Lord I'll tell him and tell somebody don't you dare allow yourself to be shamed in the feeling bad because you don't walk with the who's who don't don't you dare ever let somebody make you feel less than because you don't walk with the perceived in crowd and you don't have so and so's number in your phone and so and so didn't follow you back I need a handful of y'all that can just walk with this mindset as long as I walk with God I'll be all right Mm. Where, where the folks at as we're in this new season here where the folks at that can say don't nobody have to call my name don't nobody have to put my name in lights I don't need a special parking spot you ain't got to put me on the program as long as I get in my car and know that Jesus got in with me as long mm. yes I want a big house but as long as I walk in that studio apartment and know that the presence of the Lord's going to meet me there I'll be around he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own it says I'm almost finished that Noah walked with God he walked with God and as a consequence God who one day is tired of the sin and degradation in the earth God decides uh, Pastor Coggins that I'm going to hit reset on the human experience he says I'm going to start over with this thing I'm going to wipe this race out but I need somebody that I can trust to start over with and, and God taps Noah and says I want you to build a boat because uh, it's going to rain it's going uh, it's going to rain I want you to build a boat it's going to rain but the problem is there are scholars that suggest uh, that at this juncture in human history because uh, of the way God had orchestrated things so divinely they had never experienced rain before wait a minute wait hold on wait wait hold on you, you mean to tell me it's never rained before and and you need me to build a boat to, to get ready for a rainstorm. Wait, hold on. You you mean to tell me you need me to dedicate my time and dedicate my resource and dedicate my energy towards building something in order to prepare for an event that I've never seen before? You, you mean to tell me you need me to do something in preparation for an event that I cannot comprehend? I have no frame of reference for. I just want to ask you, church, can you imagine? how hopeless and defeated Noah must have felt trying to rationalize what God has called him to do Celeste can you imagine how weird this space must have been for Noah knowing that he has a word from God that doesn't make sense to him much less anybody else can you can you imagine how ridiculed he must have felt when people walked past his lot every day and laughed at him and his boys in the backyard on this never ending construction project if you will but I need you to hear me because some of you all are Noah because you've been anointed to blaze a trail touch somebody if you know this applies to you and tell them neighbor I'm a trailblazer I'm some of you it's not just church some of you all are trailblazers in the marketplace some of you all it's not just shouting and dancing we all can dance some of you God needs you to blaze a trail in media some of you God needs you to blaze a trail in sports some of you God needs you to blaze a trail in politics don't you let nobody tell you you can't be saved and be a lawyer the devil is a liar because when the church get ready to buy more land we need to call a lawyer that knows the law and the Lord I wish I could preach in here don't you let nobody tell you that you can't be saved and go to the NBA please here if you're watching online here Pastor Mark Moore Jr. we want you uh, to be saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and average a triple double please go to the league uh, and remember us when you get there because uh, some of us have been called to blaze trails uh, that don't all lead exclusively to the sanctuary uh, am I preaching to anybody in here but what I want you to understand is that as a trailblazer, you've got to be okay with the fact that you will not be a trailblazer and have a blueprint that you can follow. I'm talking to some of y'all that have been frustrated.
frustrated because uh, you don't know how you don't see where you don't have somebody you can call you don't have a book you can read you don't have a conference you can go to uh, let me give you clarity the reason for that for some of you uh, is because God's using you as the one uh, that's going to blaze the trail that the rest of us are going to follow uh, you're not hearing me in here tonight touch somebody one more time and say neighbor I'm a trailblazer and God said to tell you that what you got to understand is that he was building for something that we had never seen before and that's really who I feel I'm called to in here tonight I'm here to preach for these last few moments that I have to those of you that have been anointed to, to build not for what is but to build for what's coming Ah, yes, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here now. I'm not talking to those of you that lack the faith to ask God for prophetic creativity. And you can get in God's face and say, Lord, show me what you need me to do next. Because I don't want to just do what everybody else is doing. Because everybody else says, you wrote a book, now I got to write a book. You sell cookies, now I got to sell cupcakes. You can't bake. Find what God wants you to do. And then find yourself doing it. But I'm here to tell you that what you've got to understand is that God is using you to prepare for what's coming. Can you touch somebody next to you and just tell them, say, neighbor, I celebrate what was. But tell them, say, some of us have to get ready for what's on the way. I celebrate what God did yesterday. But God's looking for somebody that can be an architect for the future. I celebrate the bridges that brought us over. But God needs another bridge to take us over another body of water. And I'm just here to tell every bridge builder in here. I'm here to tell every trailblazer in the house on tonight that even though people might not understand what you're doing, I came to prophesy to you and tell you that you got to keep on building in a house because after a while the rain is going to fall and when the rain falls what you've been working on is going to be necessary I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you to just look at somebody and say neighbor, 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 neighbor say you got to keep on building because we're going to need what you're working on every builder open your mouth clap your hands and shout hallelujah well we got to close and go home tonight but brother Josh what does he flat sound like in the new church oh lord I said look at somebody and say name him I'm working on something that's next and what I'm working on is absolutely necessary can you tell your neighbor say you are the solution to somebody's problem you didn't go through that hell to just come out with the testimony you should have come out with the course that's gonna help somebody else get free you didn't survive what you survived to just come out and tell somebody on a Sunday night testimony service but there's a ministry locked up in you then God is trying to get you to birth but if you know what I'm talking about you ought to wave your hand and say I'm working on something that's about to be necessary Y'all ain't come to have no church. 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 But is there anybody I, 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 that'll get some sanitizer and rub it in real good? And why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, I, 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 I'm necessary because when God orders your steps, you might get there first. When God orders your steps, you won't know where you're going, but we're in the Lord. 
orders your steps they'll come looking for you can you tell your name name get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready because they are gonna look for you you ain't gotta chase nobody when the hand of the Lord's on you they'll look for you you ain't gotta chase a check when the hand of the Lord is on you they'll look for you y'all don't believe me but first Samuel 16 gives us an example it says Saul is looking for a champion and he got word about a little shepherd boy that can play a harp real good and I want to prophesy out of the word of God tonight and tell you what God said about David because he's singing about you too it said Paul sent messengers unto Jesse and said bring me David he said bring me David he said bring me David look at your neighbor and say neighbor your name is in the atmosphere and say they are getting ready to look for you somebody's name is on the bottom of the power but they're getting ready to move your name to the top of the power and they're looking for you ain't gone all right ain't gone all right ain't gone all right they are getting ready to come find you and that's what I came to do on the first Sunday night here I came to tell our church I don't know who your they might be I don't know what you've been praying for I don't know where you are in line but I came to deliver a word from God then you got to get ready clear your voicemail check your spam folder check your hidden messages cause God's raising up a they that are gonna bless you I heard my bishop say that the Bible said I bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you y'all didn't hear it I got to rewind Ooh, nah, nah, nah. I'll bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you y'all still didn't hear me I'll bless them plural that bless you and curse him singular that curse you tell your neighbor for every him that'll curse you God's getting ready God's getting ready God is getting ready to raise up them that's gonna bless you because the stamps of a good man are ordered by the Lord be encouraged tonight you might go through hell but keep on walking might get talked about but keep on walking they won't understand but keep on walking tears in your eyes keep on walking they'll call you crazy keep on walking because ultimately they'll call you for advice because you got to know if God be for you then who who can be against you let's go higher yeah touch one more neighbor and say neighbor I need you to help me in the night service give God praise because I got confirmation I'm not crazy I've just been ordered he took me the long way but he ain't forgotten it I'm like Abraham but he ain't forgotten it I'm like Noah but he ain't forgotten it I'm like David yeah 
but he ain't forgotten me. I need the crazy folk. I know they were packed, but get out your seat and just start walking. Just start walking. Just start walking. And tell God, I'm gonna let you order my steps. I'm gonna let you order my steps. I'm gonna let you tell me where to go. I'm gonna let you tell me what to do. I'm gonna let you get the glory out of my life. Is there anybody? Yeah. In the risers that can give God glory, give God praise, because your steps have been ordered, and because they're ordered, yea, though I walk, yea, though I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley, yeah, I fear no evil. Say, yeah, say. Somebody just start walking. Walk, 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 walk out of your trouble. Walk out of your fear. Walk, walk. Every vision, every praising. Every vision, every praising. Every vision, every praising. Every vision, every praising. I just heard the Lord say that everywhere that the soles of your feet shall tread. God said, I gave it to you. We didn't come to Springdale to just take sides. We came to take territory. The kingdom of Suffering the violence, oh, but the violence, yeah. Tell Cleveland Avenue the Holy Ghost is coming. Tell Metropolitan glory's on the way. Tell Silver Road power's on the way. Tell 166 power's on the way. Say it, yeah. Yeah! I feel the Holy Ghost. 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 I'm a little bit tired in my body. I was here all night long. I left at six this morning to go take a shower and go to the South Campus the 8, 10, and 12. But if somebody would tell me to go ahead, I'd feel a second wind. Thank you, sir. Grab one more neighbor and shake him by the hand. And say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, oh, neighbor, oh, One of us can chase a thousand, but both of us can run perversion out southwest Atlanta. Both of us can shut the gangs down. Both of us can stop the whole stroll. Both of us can shut the dope post down. Why not praise him? Why not bless him? Why not give him glory? Yeah. Everybody step in. Without the organ, I just want to hear the sound of those that know your steps have been ordered. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Come on. I said, come on.
Come on, church. I thought I was off course. My steps were just ordered. I... Hands up. Mouths open. Come on. The steps of a good man are ordered. Hands up by the Lord. Your hands are up in a position of receiving. Hallelujah. Because that's exactly what's getting ready to happen for these last few moments. It's time to receive. Receive what? Fresh download. Fresh instruction. Reach on. There's some tired pastors in here. But God says, I sent you tonight to be reminded your steps have been ordered. The Lord spoke to me and told me that he was going to use the faith of this project to encourage others as to what not Mark can do, what God can do. Come on here. Don't, don't, don't. Please don't get it twisted. Please don't get it twisted. Please don't get it twisted. He is no respecter of person. Please understand. Faith is a principle that works no matter who works it. And even this project is designed to tell somebody what your faith can do. We, we, we have some very smart people on our team, but let me, let me tell you, we're not this smart. An eight-month-old church, five acres of land, right in the perfect nook of the city, three miles from the airport, four miles from downtown, right on the cusp of development. Only God can do this. You mean to tell me that we can announce in February that we're going to have an Atlanta campus this year? What do we say? Before April 28th. That seats 400 people. Has parking and space for youth and education. And then we move in a month later. Only God could do this. You mean to tell me we come in believing? Now, hear me. Because of the phenomenal stewardship of our previous occupants, the Williams phenomenal stewardship we could have had uh, yeah, that's a good place to get, say something right there phenomenal stewardship we could have come in on day one and had service but God gave us a vision on how to make it ours God gave us a vision then he gave us a value for the vision and then told us to trust him for it and you mean to tell me in three weeks we went from 600,000 for phase one and two to just 88,000 left to pay both of them off. Watch this, debt free. Only God could do that. That's not a connection, that's God. That's not a network, that's God. That's not a degree, that's God. How did he do it? He ordered our church's steps. And I want to tell you, as you join hands, glory's about to hit this house. Able-bodied people are standing, if you're able. If you're not, you and your infirmity can keep your seat. But I need faith people that did not come for a performance tonight. Show's over. Let's tap into the glory. When God orders your steps, number one, you won't always know where you're going. Ask Abraham, get up. Go to a land where? I'll show you. You don't, you don't have no details? Nope. Tell you when you get there. Just start walking. He challenges him, you ready? To move at the speed of obedience. Because the sooner you trust me, the sooner I can bless you. And some of us in this room, you're holding hands with somebody that has to lay their own progress because they need to have too many questions answered first. Some of you are slowing your ministry down, slowing your business down, slowing your career down because you're not trusting God enough to move with limited information. God says sometimes when I order your steps, I'm not going to tell you where to go. I'm not going to give you the details. I'll just tell you when you get there because I'm trying to build your faith. 
You don't learn faith when you have all the answers. You only learn faith when you have no choice but to trust him. Noah shows us as we get ready to pray, yes, Lord, that when God orders your steps, sometimes you get there first. Noah, think about this. Noah had nobody to call for ark advice. Noah had no Google search to do for ark 101. Noah, you ready? Had no mentor. He had no plug. He had nothing but a word from God. And I'm talking to some Noahs in here that have been given blueprints from heaven. Some of you are holding hands with people that God has trusted to draw the designs for the future. Some of you are holding hands with architects. They might be a school teacher in the natural, but they're an architect in the spirit. God has trusted them with something that we're going to need in the future. And some of them, quiet as it's kept, everybody want to be a builder. Are you sure? Because sometimes building a builder is lonely. Everybody want to be a trailblazer. Are you sure? Because trailblazers often have to walk alone. Everybody want to be first. Are you sure? Because first is often lonely. And first is often misunderstood. Who you think you are? Just somebody trusting God? God said, even if you get there first, trust me that I put you there for a reason. Because when God orders your steps as we get ready to pray, you won't always know where you're going. You might get there first. But if you let him order your steps, they will come looking for you. You're holding hands with somebody whose days of chasing opportunities are over. You're holding hands right now with somebody whose season of running after things is over. Because when we decide to run after God, God says, I will cause the things you used to chase to chase you. I prophesy over this house tonight. Yes, Lord. I said it earlier. I hear it again. Miracles by midweek. God's getting ready to cause things that we've been waiting on to find us. And you, oh yes, Lord, I hear you clearly now. I hear you clearly now. And when you meet the people that you never thought you'd meet, you know what they're going to say? I've been looking for you. Oh, 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 I've been trying to get in touch with you. You didn't know they knew your name, but God knows your name. And he ordered your steps. We're getting ready to pray in this house. It's too packed for a traditional altar appeal. But here's what we're going to do. I've asked the Lord to designate this entire sanctuary as an altar. The risers, y'all are on the altar. Right side, left side, under the ledge, you all are on the altar. The entire room is an altar tonight. And I declare that the power, yes Lord, the power of God is getting ready to fall on this corporate altar tonight. The temple, yes Lord, the temple is about to be filled with his glory. Oh yes. And on the count of three, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Please honor. You know what? Y'all are wonderful. Let them do it. Please honor. But one time, Order my steps, say order. Say. What do we want him to do? How many days? Yeah. See. Father, I pray. Order. Say. Get ready to pray. Yes, Lord. We're going to go back to that. But there's a wave of glory about to hit our house. It don't have to be long to be strong. God made us precious promises when he gave us this space to call home for this season. Now declare, yes, Lord. There's about to be an outpouring of glory. Because here's what God's about to do. God's about to give somebody confirmation. I speak over you. You're not crazy. You heard what you heard. And 
while it hasn't made sense to you what doesn't make sense does make miracles and I want yes Lord I want us in this place of faith to renew our yes to God tonight yes to what yes to your will hey. yes to your way yes to your path yes to this come on don't let that hand go squeeze life into that hand come on young folk squeeze hang on into that hand that thought about let go risers get ready there's a wave I'm not playing with y'all there's a wave I'm not playing I'm not not happy with there's a wave of glory this church has been burnt in prayer hey this is not about hype this ain't about a fashion show there's an authentic anointing hey that the city needs there's an anointing that our generation needs but it's gonna require your yes hey 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 it's gonna require another yes hey come on i need you to stop your gift minister stop your gift prophet stop your gift evangelist stop your gift god says i'm about to give you a new direction hey i'm ordering your steps i'm giving you a new path i'm giving you a new grace i'm giving you a new direction we get ready to count to three. I want you to release a sound uh, as you give God another yes. Uh, one. Uh, come on, church. Uh, God says fresh instructions. Uh, fresh down, Lord. Uh, two. Uh, don't you let that hand go. Uh, intercede for your role. Uh, one, two, three. Open your mouth. Uh, open your mouth. Uh, open your mouth. Uh, Open your mouth, even at a young age. Open your mouth, come on. Open your mouth. New instructions, new downloads, clarity. In the name of Jesus, we give you another yes. In the name of Jesus, we renew our yes. In the name of Jesus, we renew our yes. 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 So say yes. So say yes. Yes to your will. God's not done. Yes to your way. God's not done. Yes to your plan. I speak a supernatural second wind to everything that pertains to you, ministry and family. In the name of Jesus, hey, in the name of Jesus, come on, Zion, come on, Zion, come on, Zion. Where's your yes? Where's your yes? Yes in this season. Yes in this season. Yes to your wheel. Yes to your way. Yes in the good times. Hey, come on, out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out. Out. Out of your belly. Give God that yes. Give God that yes. Give God that yes. Come on, overflow. He's ordering your steps tonight. He's ordering your steps tonight. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Renew your yes tonight. Renew your yes tonight. Renew your yes tonight. Renew your yes tonight. I want new direction. I want new instruction. Come on, church. If you're not too tired, if you're not too tired, go into warfare for somebody close to you and speak over your role. 
new direction, new clarity, new instructions. You're not done. God's not finished. There's another yes on the inside. There's another yes on the inside. No more delays. No more setbacks. Help me say, in the name of Jesus, from the crowd, yep, 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 yep. Stir up that gift. Stir up that gift. Stir up that gift. Stir up that gift. There's another level. There's another level of influence. There's another level of influence. Lord, put their name in the wind. Not for what they're known for, but release the prophetic word. Release the prophetic mantle. Release the insight. We know the music, but show us the ministry. Witty ideas, new inventions. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it. Put your hand right there in that belly. Take it. Take it. We got 60 more seconds. I don't need, I don't need just to look. I need a sound. Come on. Where's the sound, church? Where's the sound, church? Where's the sound, church? Sound of another yes. The sound of a fresh yes. The sound of a fresh yes. God knows what he's doing. 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 God knows. Yeah. Yeah. Church, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, Zion. Oh, Shanda Baba Hadaya. Come on, every intercessor. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let's pray through the night. Come on. Oh, oh, Jesus. You are sitting this work tonight. Come on, Zion, pray in the Holy Ghost. What a miracle, God. Come on, church, come on, church. Holy Spirit, hey. Move on the altar. Come on, church. Come on, Zion, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Come on, church. Yonder me hold ya. Have your way, Jesus. Hey, water our steps tonight. Lead us into all truth tonight. Come on, Jesus. Under the living cold, now I'm a higher. Oh, Jesus, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. I'm a higher. I'm a higher. Come on, church. Come on, church. Where's your yes? 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 You want to give God glory. I said, You want to give God glory. You might have lost some friends, but you didn't lose your yes. You may have lost some money, but you kept your yes. Open your mouth. Reach way down and give God your yes. I said, Give him glory. Help me, glory. I said, Give him glory. Hey, I still got a yes. Ultra said, I got another yes roll. I got another yes roll. I got another yes roll.
Let me hear the sound of the yes, Lord, church. Open your mouth. Without the music, cry out for your yes. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Let your yes ring out. Your steps have been ordered. Your steps have been ordered. We gotta go. I feel the praise in here. We gotta go. Just talking to those of you that know you should have gave up a long time ago, but God wouldn't let you quit because your steps were off. I'm talking about those of you that tried to throw the towel in, but God threw it back because your steps are on. I'm about telling y'all, I want to give God a real praise because you held on to your yes. I don't know who that is dancing back there, but someone ought to help her. You held on to your yes. You held on. Held on. You held on. Where's your yes? Where's your yes? Feel like shout. Feel like giving him glory. I feel like lifting him up. I feel like praising him. Yeah. Hold on to your yes. Come hell or high water. Hold on to your yes. seconds to command your feet to praise him if God ordered your steps order your feet to step go 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 I need everybody that can dance two dance because God has all if you still got a yes you gotta dance tonight I said a real dance. I said a real hey. God has ordered our steps. I said God has ordered our steps. I said God has ordered our steps. Yeah. yeah. Praise Him, Spirit and truth. Praise. Sunday night revival tonight. 
to praise him that you still have a yes. You ought to praise him because you still have a yes. In the name of the Lord. You ought to praise him. Ah! on this side if you do go for it there are ministering angels that want to bless us tonight go for it there are angels that want to bless us tonight go for it I said go for it you got 30 more seconds go for it It's the last round, we gotta go home, church. But grab some and say, help me praise him. Help me praise him. Help I dare you to praise him for
be praise in this house. Let there be praise in this house. How dare we get a miracle and not praise him for somebody? He's a miracle worker. Tell one more praise us, say neighbor. Come on, talk to the right ones, say neighbor. Because my steps have been ordered, I declare and decree, I'm getting ready to walk into a miracle. I'm getting ready to walk into favor. I'm getting ready to walk into a blessing. I'm getting ready to walk out of sickness. I'm walking out of depression. I'm walking out of lack. I'm walking out of debt. I'm walking out of fear. I'm walking out of bondage for whom the sun sets free. Dance officer. Dance officer. Open your mouth, church. Will you leave me off? If you don't mind, if you recognize his presence, would you lift your hands in this atmosphere? Leave me off. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Hands up, mouths leave open. Come me on. Jesus. Let the Lord open the door. Touch your mouth. Renew your yes. Renew your yes. Renew your yes. Ready to follow. Where you send me out, God. If you call me, I will answer. I'm ready to follow you.
got to go home, y'all. That man of God back there with that blue suit on, fanning yourself. You, is that your wife next to you? I don't know you all that I know of. We don't play games. We don't weaponize the gifts of the Spirit. But the Holy Ghost has y'all here tonight for a reason. The Holy Ghost, dare I say, has highlighted y'all tonight. The Lord told me to tell you and you, sir and ma'am, God says to tell you, he is mindful of you. And I hear the Lord saying, I hear this word every now and then, I hear the Lord saying recompense. I feel like you all being here tonight, this testimony is not just for us, this testimony is for y'all. Because I think you all need, F hallelujah. God's going to tell y'all that he is able to redeem the time. Time that you thought was lost. Time that you thought was wasted. Time that you thought was sown in vain. God says, you're here tonight so that you can see tangible evidence that God can redeem the time. God says it's not too late to do everything he showed you. God says it's not too late for y'all to do everything y'all dreamed of. Yeah. God says it's not too late to do everything, everything he put in your spirit, ministry, family, business, professional, the concepts y'all ain't even told nobody else about outside of y'all's house. Because wouldn't nobody believe it based on where you come from, but the Lord said to tell you, he's getting ready to redeem the time because he is mindful of you. I need somebody to celebrate with them. I need somebody to celebrate with them. He's mindful. He's mindful. Yep, yep, yep. You didn't waste it. You did not waste that old season. You, you, you got out of it and said, I wasted my time. God says, you have not wasted your time. He knows what he's doing now. He knew what he was doing then. He's mindful. We're going home. You can ask for going down from this place if by chance you know on the day of Pentecost there was no actual altar call given the word went forth and those that wanted it those that wanted to be saved just came so if you're here to ushers hold the door if you're here tonight and you want the gift of the Holy Ghost you can come now when I say you can come now I mean you can come now the Bible says the Holy Ghost is nigh you even in your mouth the Holy Ghost is nigh you even in your mouth Berdisha are you usher hold that door for me thank you so much there's now thank you if you want the Holy Ghost you can come the last thing I want to do we're gonna go home from here if you're here tonight and you say I need to be a part of this church I need to be a part of something like this. I need to be a part of something that's growing and going and expanding. A place where God moves. And I know that God has sent me the spirit of truth. Now here's the here's a shout part. 27 people joined our church today at this campus. Y'all ought to say something to me. Oh y'all, I said 27 joined this morning. And I don't believe God is fully done. If I'm talking to you and you know I'm supposed to be your pastor, this is supposed to be your church. I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to make your way to this altar. I promise you, this whole church is about to go crazy if you act like you're coming this way because we've been praying for you to get connected. If you're here and you know you belong in this house, would you come now, come now, come now, come now? Who am I talking to? There's one, there's one, there's one. Bless you, woman of God. Let those tears flow. That's all right. Yeah, the Lord's going to heal all of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name, minister to our sister here. Minister to her. Is there somebody else that needs to come on and get connected? You're better. We're better together. Why don't you come? Come from the overflow. Come from the rise. If you know you belong here, come on, come on. Who else is coming? Who else is coming? Oh. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. If there's one more, I'm going to spin the block. Pastor Moore, I know I belong here. Get out of your seat. Come now. Come now. Move at the speed of obedience. If you know you belong under this anointing, I want you to come on. 
Will y'all help me celebrate those coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west? Would y'all help me celebrate? Have your seat tonight. They're going to take you to the new members the hallway. We, we got to get the room finished, but amen. They'll get your information. How many of y'all are glad y'all came to church tonight? About five of us. How many of y'all are glad you came to church tonight? All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to dismiss us. But I got to do this first. I failed to do it earlier, but it's in order to do it now. I, I want to just salute. I honored and we honored all of our guests, but I don't want to be the kind of church that only honors outside gifts, does not celebrate or thank God for those in the house that have gone above and beyond. This week has been a, uh, a trying week, a challenging week. Uh, it has been a week that has really separated uh, some wheat from some tear, if I can say it that way. And I want to salute the members of our church that were active and involved in this process. Uh, whether you were here, some of your work schedules would not allow you to come in person. Uh, but so many of you were active and uh, in involved even on social media. You know, I, I notice, you know, some folk, uh, you know, don't pay attention when, when people are trying to tell you how they feel. But I, I try to be an eloquent listener. And uh, when people can see you working on something and pushing something and never, never lend no support. They're making a statement, you understand? And I want to salute those of you that made the right statement this week and made your faith and your presence and your support known really over these last few weeks as we've been working. I want to celebrate everybody that, that sold and paid off your pledge. If you haven't done so yet, uh, you still have time. The deadline is really the end of the month. Uh, or really, really April 1st was the, the, the first cutoff, but then we extended it uh, to April 28th to accommodate those that did the first pledge. And so you still have time. Let me be very clear. Don't get it twisted. Pastor Mike Todd did not pay your pledge. He didn't make your pledge. He didn't pay your pledge. Or he paid his pledge, all right? If you made a pledge, I want you to do what you said because we've already factored that in. We've already counted on you to be integral. And so let's do that. But I got to make a shout out uh, to some, you cut those off, to some of those that have gone above and beyond. Where's our head deacon, Deacon George Morad? Where's he at? There he is. Y'all clap for head deacon over there. Above and beyond, above and beyond. Where's Deacon Kenneth Giles at? Where's Deacon Kenneth Giles? There he is. Above and beyond. Has a wife, a young family, but he was here late, 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 and consistently, consistently, consistently. Where's Brother Rashawn Davis? He might be out working. There he is. Y'all clap for Brother Rashawn Davis. Clap for him. Where's his, he might have had to go to work. Brother James Hutchinson, is he in the house or has he had to step out? He had to go to work. Y'all clap, a working man. Y'all clap for him here above and beyond where is uh, sister kennedy robinson where's sister kennedy at yeah, oh got her nurse's uniform on today here late 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 early 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 uh, we celebrate that we thank god for that uh where is sister simone Mose? where's sister simone there she is y'all clap for her she was one of those that spent the night here last night uh, these are some church kids for real. They took some of these chairs y'all are sitting on, and you can make a, you can make a mattress out of church chairs. Y'all know that, right? Depending on how tall you are, you take six chairs, you know, eight chairs, turn them to each other, and just lay. Now I lay me down to sleep right in the middle. She was knocked out in the finance room. Amen. Knocked out in that finance room, but she was here. She was here. It was six in the morning. She should have been asleep by the end. Uh, thank God for her. Where is, I, I got to shout out, I got to shout out Pastor Vance Robinson. I got to shout him out, y'all. He was here above and beyond. Watch this. He was here on his birthday working, y'all. Y'all ought to say something about that. And he wasn't the only one here on his birthday. Elder Lawrence Wilburn was here working on his birthday, too. Somebody say above and beyond. Say it again, say above and beyond. One of our values is that the extra mile is our privilege. I wanna thank God for not only Pastor Robinson, but Pastor Lewis Pollard. Let's celebrate him. Long, 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 long nights. Early, early mornings. But then y'all thought he just sang, but no, y'all shout for Elder Antoine Cooks, y'all. Canceled or amended uh, an engagement. He amended an engagement 
because he felt like as an elder of this church and as someone that's actually invested, that's the word. He said, our church is going to move in. I need to be there. Now, I want to talk about him because he was here all night. He was the other one, one of the other ones that slept here last night, spent the night. He made him a church chair mattress as well. That's how we know these chairs got go Some of y'all going to sing better tomorrow because uh, you don't know you sitting in a chair that Elder Antoine has anointed. You didn't even know. You're going to be waking up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You didn't even know where it came from. It came from right there. Amen. Amen. Did I do that right? Did I'm, I'm going to work on it a little bit. Amen. Pray for me. Uh, but he was here. Now listen, uh, I sang. It wasn't no singing going on yesterday. It was construction. But you know what he was doing? He was operating in the ministry of presence. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? Because when you're involved and invested, you show up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to celebrate him. I'm almost finished. We got to celebrate. Where is Brother Travis Hargrove? <laughs> Where, he outside working. Y'all clap till Travis hear you in that hallway. <laughs> Brother Travis has done so many runs, so many miles, uh, so many uh, 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 missions, carried so many boxes, and we want to celebrate him above and beyond. Uh, but he wasn't alone. Where's Deacon Aaron Arnold? We got to talk about him. We got to talk about him. Deacon Aaron Arnold's one of those kind of brothers. You get a few of him, you can, you can, take, you can take the city. He was here. Some days it seems sun up to sun down. And y'all know he takes a lot of excuses away because he got a young wife. He got a young child. There's Brother Travis over there coming in. Got his suit on, his Palm Sunday suit and everything. I see you, Travis. Amen. Amen. But Deacon Arnold was here. He has a young, young family and still found a way to make ministry important. Still found a way to make ministry a sacrifice. Y'all know to clap for him one more time. Clap for him one more time. And uh, we're getting ready to go home, but I cannot leave off. I got to talk about her uh, because she has really been the project manager. Uh, not, not really been. She's literally been uh, the project manager working with the, the, the crews and uh, bringing in people and putting out fires. And not only was she the project manager for this phase, uh, but she was the realtor in the last phase. She navigated and helped us close the deal uh, and has been there, boots on the ground. She's that other one that was here uh, all night. Wasn't even really in morning service. Her and Elder Antoine said, where they at? They were here working and didn't even have time to go home and change. They were here in church today but they just you didn't see them because they were serving in other areas but y'all got to help me celebrate trusty Teresa Thomas y'all got to help me y'all got to help me y'all got to help me come on y'all we can do better than that we can do better than that oh no we we, we can do better than that y'all we can do better than that we would not have been able to do this if she had not uh, operated the way she did uh, don't start. Don't start that prophetess stuff now. Don't. Don't. There's a minor prophet. Mine, she got one prophetic word right now. Now she got an armor bear. Now Simone, her adjutant. I don't even know what's going on with this. Amen. But we're grateful for everybody. Let's stand up. We got to get out of here, y'all. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Next Sunday, let's show them on the screen. The Springdale Fest takes place this Saturday, right here at the church. Springdale Fest takes place. If you want to vend. Or volunteer, please scan this QR code. This is the last thing. Now, when we talk about vendors, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. What do I have to do to be a vendor? Hear me. If you sell a product that will not send people to jail, hell, or the emergency room, you need to scan that QR code and be a vendor, all right? We would love to have you involved. We're going to make some noise in the community. It's going to be free food, bounces, games. Uh, the city is bringing out the health trucks for free screenings. Uh, it's going to be an amazing time. Live DJ, all kinds of good things going on. If you want to volunteer, and we need more volunteers, I want you to scan that QR code to help us serve our community. I'm excited about the Springdale Fest, but let's talk about Resurrection Sunday. What a day it's going to be. Resurrection Sunday next week, next week, next week uh, is going to take place 7 a.m. sunrise service at the South Campus, all right? 7 a.m. sunrise service, and then there's going to be 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. here, right here at the temple. Now, go to the one with the QR code, because I want you, if you will, please let us know which service you're coming to so that we can try to prepare for you. I got a feeling we might have a good crowd next week. What y'all think? 
I think we might, a few people might show up next week again. So I want you to make sure that you let us know if you're coming to 10, 12, or 7. And I skipped right over Good Friday. There is no resurrection without a crucifixion. And so Good Friday, we're going to be here. There it is. Pastor Johnny Brown is going to be with us uh, on Good Friday. Where's it going to be? Right here in the temple. On Good Friday, all of these unfinished things that you see now, come back Good Friday. Not just to shout, but we'll give you a license to be a spectator for just a few moments to come see what the Lord has done. We'll have everything finished uh, with the help of the Lord on this Friday and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful celebration, all right? Now, Pastor, what about Tuesday? Are we having Bible study? Yep. Where? At the M3 Center. We gave it a break tonight. Amen. Y'all have shouted and tore that place up. In Jesus' name, we needed, we needed to give it a break tonight. And so we're going to be there Tuesday night for Bible study and here on Good Friday. Amen? Let's stand to our feet for the benediction. Can we honor the Lord one more time for Pastor Melinda Blue being with us tonight? Can we honor the Lord for her? Can we make a whole lot of noise for our bishop, Bishop Michael Blue? Can we make a whole lot of noise? I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. What about Dr. Shirley Moore? Are we glad she came with us? Amen. We're going to dismiss. I want you to love on everybody you can. Speak, be friendly. Uh, we're going to believe God for great things. If you're going to the restrooms, the restrooms are through those doors, but the only exit is through the sanctuary door. Amen? Let's get out of here, all right? But you know what we got to do first? Come on, let me hear you say, always remain. Said Jesus, Jesus. They're cheating. Hold on, musicians, just the voices. All oh, say it, church. Ways. That sound good. Thank you, Jesus. What's his name? Oh, oh, oh. see what the Lord has done. Always, always. Law enforcement has asked me. <laughs> that sound we we got law enforcement in the parking lot. I like that. That's big church stuff. All right. Law enforcement has advised me uh, to tell you all, please be patient when exiting the lot. Uh, they're going to guide you out. The patrol car is going to guide you out. Uh, these are these are these are good problems to have. So they're going to go out. You need to talk to some people anyway. All right. So let's dismiss. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We celebrate you because you have allowed us to see what you have done. Lord, as we leave this place, don't allow us to leave your presence, but bring us back together at the appointed time, ready to give you the glory and ready to give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for this house that you have blessed us with, this testimony that you have allowed us to be a part of. We thank you, God, even now that you're giving us miracles by midweek. We thank you, now, hallelujah, that you're allowing us to walk in the goodness of the Lord. We ask God that you bless every pastor represented tonight. The same grace that's on this house, put it on theirs. God, pour back into our bishop who has graced us tonight. Give him sweet rest. He and Lady Blue, uh, Pastor Melinda, let them have traveling mercies headed back. Lord, Dr. Moore, everybody that's been a part of this celebration, revive. Those that have worked, let them have sweet rest tonight. We thank you for your favor going with us and ahead of us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Love on everybody. Love on everybody. Greet one another. Minister Carl. Thank you for being a part of our Spirit and Truth virtual experience today. We pray that you felt the divine presence of God and received the life-changing word that has the power to transform your life. Remember, this is not the end, but just the beginning of a deeper relationship with God and connection here at Spirit and Truth. And last but not least, remember, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth.